Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to receive the Town Mayor of Biddle, Councillor Ken Harper, the Deputy Town Mayor of Biddle, Councillor Nigel Yates, and the Chief Officer, Mrs. Sarah Hayden. Chief John. John. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, yay! Yeah. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Once upon a time, long, long ago, a man had special needs as a copper, you know. There was no flashing blue lights resting on his head, just a whistle and Wayne with him instead. His life wasn't easy. It was sometimes quite drastic. But this man had a liking for knicker elastic. <laughs> Don't be misled, it was purely professional. But we often spent hours in the church confessional. He'll be forever known as the pothole king. But now I'll reveal a very strange thing. He's very much prone to now having hot flushes as he and Wayne go round trimming bushes. He's well known around town for stopping to talk. Always out on his bike, too idle to walk. But if truth be told, he does a great job. I'm wishing that I would now shut my dog. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Councillor Yates, come on, mate. I won't tell a soul you're 60 today. Your fellow councillors have commissioned this cry. They couldn't let this birthday pass by. Mr. Mayor and councillors, thanks for your attention. As Nigel's now 60, this fact I must mention. He won't yet get a bus pass, just keep riding his bike. And in a few years, can upgrade to a trike. Mr. Deputy Mayor, friend to many, you're now at an age where if you need to spend a penny, the distance to the loo gets shorter each year. And if you're too late, you'll get messy, I fear. I'm going to end this proclamation to avoid more <laughs> claims of defamation. You're 60 today, so join the club. It's your round later if you go in the pub. Happy 60th birthday, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Am I afraid of a backlash? I really don't care. You can't say a word, because truth to tell, I'd stand on the steps and this cry I'd yell. God save the king. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, shall we bow it in prayer? Lord God, look after all these councillors, the mayor, the deputy mayor, and the chief officer, and all those who work at this town hall. Let tonight's meeting flow freely with fair debate without malice. They are here to serve the town and you, dear Lord. In your name, I say, Amen. Right. Right. Councillors, if you'd like to be seated. Thank you. Oh. That one, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Just because you're simple doesn't mean you're exempt. You'll have, to, you'll have to bear with me now. I've got advancing years, what somebody mentioned. So. Uh, I'd like to say this meeting has been recorded and will be uploaded to the Middle Town Council YouTube page. I'd like to add from this moment in time. Uh, the aim is that the decision making should be transparent and in the public domain, which will involve more of our community and local democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to be recorded and for your image to be added to YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed are the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect view of the view of the Biddletown Council. Please view the guidance on recording and public meetings policy if you require more information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. All right, councils, uh, if we move on to number 11, which is public participation. I don't think we've got any public participation. Do, sorry? John Robinson. Oh, right, John Robinson. <laughs> He's hardly public, but there you go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, councillors, um, last year when I was 70, my twin brother 
gave me a, a beautiful, gave me a beautiful present. And those that have seen it commented on it and said how wonderful it would be if I could present it to the town council. I'm not going to present the birthday present, but I've had another one made. And I'll pass this amongst you. I'll please ask you to be careful, if you don't mind, because it, it's a lot of fun. What's a picture of him, is it? No. You can take it out of the box, but please don't drop it. Oh, yeah. Give it to me. Fantastic. Uh, it was made by a company out at Whitchurch. And it's so realistic, it's, it's just uncanny. And when I was asked about donating the original to the council, I thought, well, no, I'm not going to. Uh, but what I am going to do, I'm going to make a copy, and that's the copy. This is, you can't tell the difference between that and the original. Awesome. So uh, it's very good, isn't it? Yeah. Really? So uh, I'd like to donate that to the council, please. I know there's plenty of photos and videos and goodness knows what knocking around of me, but I thought that could be put in the cabinet and... Uh, Get there for posterity because I won't always be here, but hopefully that will. A bit of weight off, sisters, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's called mini me. <laughs> so it's mini me too. <laughs> well, it's done. Yeah. Councillor Jackson. Yeah, can I? Just like to say, I think perhaps on behalf of the council, certainly on behalf of the Labour group, John, that's a, a lovely gesture. And um, it is like having a mini me. Somebody said over there just picked up on that. Yeah, it's a lovely gesture. And it is so like like the waistline, perhaps has been exaggerated on the model. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's a lovely gesture. And I'm sure um, it'll be in this council chamber for many, 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 many years to come. I thank you. Thanks very much. It's more handsome than the leader. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't seen it. So it's all Luke. Is there a string for that back, Chad, to make yes. it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne, you want to say something? Be nice. I don't know, I don't. How long have you been in the town? Yeah. I've lost count myself. Uh, 29 years. 29 years. 29 years in October. Yeah, I'll just, you know, Kevin Jackson said uh, exactly perfect. Thank you. I remember sending out <laughs> the school kids to design John's That's face. Right. First um, outfits, and there were some really weird and wonderful designs, John. There, was, yeah. there certainly was. It, it was de designed, my first regalia was designed at Leek College of Art. And uh, I used the term art very loosely. <laughs> Looked more like Batman than anything else. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just fat man. So. Well, John, I'm just going to reiterate what Kevin. And what Wayne has said, you know, it's a lovely gesture by yourself. Thank you. Um, and it will be with us longer even than you. And I will. Yeah. You know, so thank you very much for that, John. And no I'd problem. like to shake you by the hand. Thank you very much, Mr. On behalf of the council, thank, thank you very you. much. Sure, John. Thank you. Thank you. That doesn't mean you can finish it. Yeah. Okay. Right. The next item, um, regular attendees, we've got Savage Police and County Council. Which one of you guys wants to go first? Let's go first. I'll uh, I'll start by introducing myself, uh, as I'm sure I'm a new face to most of you. I'm Liam. I'm one of the new local PCSOs for Biddle Town Centre. So I'm sure you can see a lot more of me in the, the coming months. Uh, recently moved over here this week, uh, but as for the incidents in the town centre. Antisocial behaviour, we've seen a decrease in the town of 26%, dropping to below five incidents in the last month. Uh, they consist of <coughs> two reported uh, around Sainsbury's, one for cars being used in antisocial manner, and uh, a group of youths in the area. There was uh, also one antisocial incident on High Street, which was a drug hire, which was dealt with at the time. 
Other things I'll go on to note from the incident is we currently had some funding for extra patrols in the middle area for the start of the holidays. Uh, now that's over the weekends, and that will go for the first few weekends of the school holidays. Uh, we currently have some youths on bail with a curfew, so for the ones who we were aware of for some issues, uh, we are dealing with them. We're looking to start up new drop-in sessions uh, around the middle to give the community and public more chance to come and talk to us and raise any concerns. And we're looking into the deployment of mobile monitored CCTV in our hotspot areas. Uh, which will be able to deploy and review uh, all the hotspots. So if we do get incidents, we can look to deal with it. Uh, okay. I'm not the only new PCSO for Biddle. There is one other. So we now have full complement of PCSOs for areas. Uh, David Alkington uh, is Dutch's designing our crime officer. He's visited the area and used a report for Biddle, uh, the town centre, which is now being reviewed. And we are arranging with Sarah, uh, a monthly police councillor, uh, dial in and drop in to discuss issues residents have uh, concerns around that the police need to be aware of and deal with an action. But other than that, not much has changed. In the last month, obviously, we've seen the reduction in incidents uh, and the rest is still had to implement in the future to move forward and best tackle the issues for residents. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I think there might be one or two questions. Uh, but, you know, yeah, go on, Kevin. Sorry, Councillor Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, you mentioned the um, community drop-in meeting. Yes. Can I just ask, plead, please? I got a message that this meeting was, and I think it was today, there was actually no date on the email. So I'm assuming it was today. Uh, and I got it at two, uh, four minutes past two, or it was sent to me, and the meeting, and that meeting started at two o'clock, which I thought was today. I didn't actually open until about three o'clock. So could we have a little bit further notes? Now we're going to have a, we're going to have a set date or a set time, which might be more useful. All I was going to say on that, sorry, is the one that you've had today, I had that as well, that's called cool, you know, Smart, and that's the, that's the already the existing meeting that the police do in the town hall. So that's just a reminder of something that already exists. What I've spoken to Sergeant Machen about is having one that's particular for councillors. So we'll, we'll sort out a date for that. Yes. Yeah. Any points about the, the reduction in anti-social anti behaviour? Um, I'm just wondering... Has the outreach from the zone perhaps had an effect on some of that antisocial behaviour? Uh, the outreach workers I think are working on, uh, on in the streets a bit of the evening, so hopefully that's helped to, to reduce those 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 figures. Um, the COVID, the, the CCTV, which was welcome, and I think it was mentioned at the meeting we had with the Police and Crime Commissioner downstairs a few weeks ago. Um, how do we, as a council or as an individual councillor, say, look, we've got a hotspot, how quickly can we get some CCTV in this area? Because the, the thing is, these hotspots don't stay hot for any length of time. They're hot at the moment, and, you know, next week it's not, or next month it's not. So getting something there fairly quickly is, is really very, very important. Um, so I think... Again, thanks very much for coming again this evening. Um, and I look forward to these the regular sort of surgeries that we have um, with the police. And again, could I ask that we perhaps li liaise with your housing to get them to come along to some of these meetings? I mean, I used to have a, um, a monthly meeting with uh, your housing uh, and one of the PCSOs when Brick was open many years ago. And that was a month to month, every, every month uh, on a Monday. And somebody from your housing showed up and, and the, one of the PCSOs. And it was really useful. Sometimes we had nothing to discuss, other times we did. But it was really useful having that regular contact with, with the police and your housing. Because what happens quite often, people are telling me, they ring the police with an issue and they are told, well, it's not really a police issue, it's your housing issue. 
they ring your housing and they say it's not your housing issue, it's a police issue. And trying to get the two of you in the same room at the same time might be beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Uh, uh, Councillor Wood, sorry. It's only a quick one, uh, it's just a, uh, for new councillors. Uh, now we've got a full complement of the PCSOs. Can we have their contact details? Yes, so, so can, in, uh, obviously this is a public meeting and we don't want to give the numbers out tonight. So but for, I think for councillors that would be useful if we could have emails and mobile numbers. Absolutely, councillor. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's an imperative, quite frankly. Um, in addition to that, what I could never quite work out with this new system, your predecessor by that, I mean the whatever he called himself, Mr. Uh, Police Crime and Commissioner Guy. Uh, at one time, PCSOs, police officers, whatever, used to knock on our door, and we'd have a sit down and a cup of tea, and we'd chew the cud, and we'd find out what was happening. And there was an exchange, a very good exchange, and then for some reason, that died. And I can't quite understand it, because the idea of PCSOs is to blend in, if you like, with, with different people, with councillors, with, with everyone in, in, in the village of sorry, town. So I think that we, you know, we've moved backwards on that. And I would, I'm, I'm sure every single council in this room, if you were to knock on their door, they'd open it and they'd welcome you in for a brew, particularly if it's raining. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, I get, I get that. And I'll, I'll take that away and bring it up as an option as yeah. why I often do it. I'll start doing it again. Uh, just answering a few of the other things around how we get in touch with the CCTV around the hotspots. Obviously, with this being a, a new thing, we're trying to get up and running. I'll go away and speak to my sergeant to find out how what the plan looks like, how that will work. Obviously, when all the final details have been chiseled out, I can send that out to you and say, this is the plan, this is how it will work, and how you can access them and say where the hotspots are. Uh, and as for the PCSO contact details, uh, we'll all be sent out. Councillor Rogers, if you want to. Uh, thank you. Sorry, got me back to you. Uh, yeah, just, just a quick one on CCTV. Is yeah. it live or is it you can watch what happened yesterday or whatever? I don't know if so. Uh, with it being like I say, it's a thing they're looking at to try and get out and roll it out. I will ima I'd imagine it will be that week back. But I will bring up that detail, so I'll get that in touch with you right now. Yeah. Any more questions? I, I know a little bit about CCTV because I've had a chat with Jamie Machen this afternoon, but he and I are going to do more investigating next week. And it is it is exactly as, as we said, it is really new, um, this idea that we have to access CCTV. Um, there was reference to a report that's been written about antisocial behaviour and kind of managing crime out. So I've got a copy of that. That's been written to me. And obviously, Jamie's been copied into that. So that's on the agenda for next Tuesday so that we can talk about some of the issues that it brings up within that report for both recommendations for this building and for a couple of other areas in the town as well. So I think yeah. some quite new, new needs. Yeah. Can I ask uh, this report that you're referring to? Councils are giving it in plenty of time to read it and digest it because sometimes we'll get things on the night. Not long things. That thing will yeah. go out tomorrow. With, we'll the, tomorrow with right. the agendas for next week's meeting. Well, splendid. Thank you very much. Any other questions, councillors? Liam, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, what you've had to say. Um, I'm sure we'll all work together and uh, I wish you all the very best in Bidwell. Definitely. I'm sure you'll all see plenty of it. Uh, and, yeah. and remember, there's always a brew. Always a brew. Thank you. Thank you. Right, councillors, the next one is Savage County Council representative. We've got two, haven't we? Go on, councillor. <laughs> <Flunder. laughs> Thanks. Tom, we've only got five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got three minutes or two minutes, and you've got 10, 28 or something. That's right. The way he talks, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, I've just I've been with these two reprobates for uh, for a couple of meetings recently and for an event on Friday. And I must say they could come to me both. So there we go. I'll get that out of the way. Um, so what's been happening um, in terms of health scrutiny and audit and accounts and things like that? There's quite a few things going on at the moment at the county council, uh, trying to restructure the way that we scrutinise things up there. 
Um, there's a bit of training that we've also done for complaints training as well and things like that. I don't know. What, I don't think you made it, did you, Nigel, on that one? Um, so it's it's there's things happening to try and improve the services overall, um, and I'm glad to see it in some respects. Uh, certainly with the health service, something else. I know John's going to have to be hot on this one um, in terms of how that's going to be structured, both with district and county together, <laughs> working in, with the new um, collective uh, ICB and also the policy and the strategy that's now being implemented on that one. So I think that would be quite interesting to see. Just to let you know, an audit and accounts, as far as the county council is concerned at the moment, they are in fact uh, three years behind on their auditable accounts at the moment due to issues around uh, having someone that can actually do it for the, such a size of nature of that business. Um, so today we did manage to appoint someone um, and they are now getting on with it. And by the end of this financial year, we should have both the 20, uh, 21, 21, 22, and also the 22, 23 done by this time next year. So it's quite an uphill struggle. It's, it's not that it hasn't been done in terms of physical elements of it, but having someone actually to look at those accounts, I found that quite uh, interesting today in the meeting. And it's something that the public sector as a whole is, is having issues with at that size of, of uh, companies and things like, and organisations, uh, the size of the county council. So I just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, we had also some updates on fraud and how that's working as well. Um, and that's quite interesting to know how that's going at the moment. Um, I, I think that's about it for the moment from those. I have some economic figures and library figures as normal. And then on to the more bid off central things at the moment. Um, the funding event, the follow up on that, we're still trying to see if we can follow up that with support Staffordshire to try and get those 15 plus um, organisations that came to the funding day to get them registered and so they can start applying for all these different funds. Skivvies has sent out yet another set of applications or opportunities for people to be able to apply for funding. So I thought I'd end up uh, that particular section of, of my very rapid run through this, uh, this evening with the fact that the environment, and I'm sure um, Nigel's going to go to it because it's his speciality, uh, there's now £1,500 for each of the county councillors uh, to be able to give out for environmental funding projects um, in each of their divisions. So hopefully there um, will, will be an opportunity for me and Nigel to work together. Um, had some uh, elements around... Um, a, a, a lady called Natalie Jennings uh, contacted me about access uh, to uh, Squirrel Hay School. I went to see them this afternoon before coming here. Um, I've put some actions down, so hopefully that can be something that I can support through my DHP. Yet again, I'm not sure whether that be able to do that. And certainly uh, the school's trying to do their access within the school and the areas there and by the gates. And then I'm going to try and do things away from there to allow them to get to school at the moment because that whole of that state wasn't really designed and I've got maps and drawings of all the places they want drop curves and everything else if I did that then I think it might be a much larger project so I've tried to take it down into into small steps at least get them from where they live to the actual school itself I think would be the first stage so we'll see how that one works out as well um I was invited to the bid of orchestra evening uh, the festival sorry I missed the the Saturday opening last uh, weekend last and I thought that was a very good concert on, on, uh, on uh, Friday evening. And I just say that the money that has been going from my community budget and Ian's community budget as well, Kay was there, uh, can certainly be seen where that money has been going to. Uh, and it's something I think we should be proud of, that that orchestra is still up and running and working, as with all the other activities that are happening with the festival. I just wanted to, to point that one out. And if there's anyone else, it's there, the, my community fund is also open for applications at the moment. Right, DHP. Um, there has been a lot of chit chat going on about when the uh, potholes are going to be repaired or the, the cat free potholes are going to be repaired along Park Lane at the top end. Um, the date keeps changing as, as Sarah has been <laughs> spotting every single time. I think if hey, it's going to be done on this day, they come back and say it's going to be done earlier. Now it's going to be done later. Then, yeah, so I know Nigel's been having the same thing. I think they're just inventing it as they go along, depending on the weather. Um, so I think that that will be done over the, the coming weeks. Um, the school uh, disability access I've explained to you at the moment on that one. Uh, the residence group, um, I've had a chat um, this evening and I hope that um, the, um, oh, what's John will come to that as well if he can do. John, are you happy to do that and come to that meeting again? John Redfern? Yeah. yeah, okay. So we're going to see what we can do with what's left over. Um, I will support it again. Uh, Temporarily to see if residents and, and we can get something done on this one. Um, I'm still disappointed with the lack of response back from both the, the, the more senior 
both the county and the district councils on some of the issues that we've highlighted on that. Um, I did some DHP site visits as well between that last meeting and this meeting uh, in my area as well and uh, Newport Road, Road and other areas like that. I went to see some people down there as well. Um, I also had a funding meeting. I, don't know, I think that was before the last meeting, wasn't it, at the Bowling Club? Um, and then there's just been the flooding that's been yes. reported this yes. evening yes. down Park Lane, which I've just picked up on because that's come about since I left my home at lunchtime today. So I will be trying to move on with that. I'm now open for questions. Yes, so that was a very quick run through. Councillor Orley, you wanted a question, Councillor Thank you, Mr. Young. Um, yeah. The it's a bit dismayed when you turn around and tell me that there's three years those accounts at Staffordshire County Council have not been audited. We here at Biddletown Council get ours done every year. Now, in my mind, somebody at Stafford wants the backside kicking it's, to be quiet. Yeah, I, 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 just the thing is, we've got a situation at the moment where Birmingham City Council, the 760 million quid overdrawn, in fact, in, in a right mess. And we turn around and say, we haven't had our the accounts audited for three years. This is absolutely stunning, to be quite honest. And somebody needs to take an account on that. Well, can and, I and, and, I'm sorry, but to come back and say they can't find people to do it, when we can do it every year, I find just amazing. OK, so the county council have to jump through more hoops in terms of making sure that the people that they um, contract to do the auditing, the problem has been <laughs> is that because of the alterations in terms of the number of loops that are going through it, there hasn't been the people lining up to be able to be contracted to do it. That's been the issue. It hasn't been the county council's wish not to do it. It's been the, um, the remit that's been changed at, at central government and also in terms of how it's audible at the moment to find those people who are willing to do it. And that's what's been the problem. Okay. It's not, it's not been, it's, it's a national problem. It's not just I, I said, if I said that wrong, apologies. It's not a problem at the county. It's a problem on a national scale in terms of we can actually do that work. You just come back on that. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that with what it, but to yeah. sit there and to say for three years the accounts haven't been audited, I just find totally and utterly amazing. And I think, it, to be quite honest, in all the excuses, it is not acceptable. <laughs> Right, Council Lord, and then Councillor Jones. I mean, just just on that point on the accounts, I, and I, I agree with uh, Councillor Lord. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the, there's been a delay in the in Staffordshire Moorlands at the moment with the with the audit accounts, but it's only a, it's a technical delay. So, but they have been done in the previous years. To find that, you know, if someone is going to audit the accounts of the county, and something happened three years ago, you know, and that's been continuing now, it. it there's something serious gone wrong. They haven't completed the accounts. They just haven't had that tick box element at the end. Yeah, but it's a legal requirement to have the tick box done. So, so there's some serious issues need to be raised at the right level at the county council in terms of what you know their auditing process. You know you've got to be audited. Yeah. You know, and you know it's a legal requirement. So to say for three years you haven't done it is is. I think it came off the back of the pandemic and the fact that there wasn't... Well, we had the pandemic in the Moorlands as well. I mean, money's due out, was so... I mean, it's just a different... It, all I'm saying is it, it is a legal requirement. Just in, and I think Councillor Jones, we, we had the health scrutiny, didn't we? That's why I got my hand up. Yeah, yeah. Carry yeah. on. I'm sure John will raise the, probably some of the questions for us. We, we had a discussion on, obviously, the, the, the scrutiny committee on health at the county is the overarching organisation for health and services and, and, and everything else. Now, and we were saying, if we raise an issue at the town council, and we wanted it raising at the district council at the scrutiny, which we can't do, but then there's a blockage. If we wanted to raise it at the district with the county, the chair of the scrutiny committee at the county has the authority to decline our request to scrutinise a particular issue, whether it be dentistry or whatever, and, and issues like that. Now, that 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 doesn't seem right. I think that you know the old scrutiny committee were in unison in, in terms of if we we've got a right as elected members to raise issues with the representative bodies, the organising bodies in charge of those services to raise issues. And what they're saying is, well, if all the eight district councils in the county raise issues, then they've got they've got to attend these eight different councils. And we said, no, we just want to raise the issues at the right arena to have our voices heard. Uh, so I think this, we need to be applying pressure. 
I know the leaders have got to sign it off, and I think it's been signed off in the next few weeks or whatever. But I think that, that there's got to be a caveat that if a district council, by, whether it's a town council putting to the district and the district put it to the county, to the county, there's got to be that facility where we can do that. You know, and at the moment, it seems as there could be a blockage. I'm sure John will elaborate on that. Just go to John. Councillor Wood. Sorry, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, that's exactly why I have my hand up, uh, Councillor Wood. Uh, you weren't at that panel, uh, so I, I just want to make you aware that it, it, to a man and a woman, everybody on that panel last Wednesday was against it and saying that we've got the right to scrutinise locally services like ambulance service and GPs and that type of thing. And the recommendation to Cabinet was that we would that they should sign it, but we will reserve the right to bring service providers to leak to account for themselves. Uh, we're certainly not going to be going cap in hand, Councillor Poor at Stafford every time we want to scrutinise something. Uh, it was quite uh, it, it was quite um, decisive I think, last Wednesday. Uh, uh, Councillor Parks was there and wanted to, and Councillor Wood. Uh, and, you know, we're not having it, basically. It's something that uh, I never agree with. Uh, so uh, we just want to make you aware of that. Just um, a bit of an anecdotal on potholes. Um, <laughs> I walk my dog at Brown Edge. There's a little car park up on Brown Edge on the top of the park there. A little, little car park. County owned, it's a county car park. And there's a little track going to it. It's only a tarmac track. It's got about 20 or 30 potholes in it. Just they have been track. beautifully repaired. Oh, right, OK. Beautifully repaired. But we've still got several tank traps up in New Street. I just... <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. That, like, I mean, I, you know, I know you know, and, and I know Councillor Yates knows, but for goodness sake, we've got to get it sorted out. You know, when they're fixing one pothole, not, they're not fixing the one that touches the one they fixed because it wasn't on the list. It's just it really <laughs> needs to be banging it. Same I, I know you know, and I know you, you don't like it, the same as I do, but for goodness sake, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's it makes sense. presented. Yeah, it doesn't make sense a lot of the time. Um, going back on the health committee, um, I think that's something that um, I've missed, and it's something I think that uh, Nigel hasn't been involved with yet. But we used to have a small group meeting of the county councils in each of the districts as well, but so for more than we haven't had that for some time now. And I think this is something that we do need to take up. And a good reason for starting that up again would be this issue around the, the health committee. So perhaps we could take that forward and see what else we could do on that. Um, so I think that the, the, all the councillors within the morning, the, the county councillors need to work together on that and, and maybe produce something that puts a bit more weight on it. I'll certainly have a word um, um, with the chair of the health committee as well. It's just come back as well. Yeah, Councillor John. The point was well made to me by somebody after the meeting. It's not the fact that we, you know, we think we're being sidelined. We are being sidelined. But trying to get somebody like the ambulance service to come and talk to us, I think, is bad enough under the old system yeah. when it was a full scrutiny. Trying to get them to come along when we're only a subcommittee, they're going to say, well, that's a district. They've got a decision on the subcommittee. Then. Well, that's, that's a reason that, that there's, there's uh, uh, representation going forward to try and change the, the structure back, back, back to, to what it was at least because it, it's farcy clouds. It is the most... Yeah, the health committee now has got a much bigger brief than it ever had, and it's Absolutely. now a subcommittee to the community. Absolutely, you know, and that's not an issue for you, but you know, it's just bizarre. <laughs> it's the so, implementation of the current strategy is going to be the biggest piece of work that's been done for some right. years. Can we wind this one up now? Because so, we've got no, nothing. Why the Tory administration, Keith? Can I just um, <laughs> go on? <laughs> can, I, um, can I just um, say thank you also on, on record to Jill Salt for uh, making sure that I was aware of the issues up at Squirrel High School? Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank Keith because various events I've been to. Jackson's just coming in. Yeah, he's 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 been he's always been there. He's, he is a face that you can recognise, and a councillor that puts himself about. I mean that in a nice way. Right. <laughs> uh, councillor Jackson. Yeah, very quickly, just so it doesn't drop off the radar. Key. Ballard, Duke Street, I'm sure you've got it on the. Oh, he's forgotten. But I'll, be, no, I'll be down Duke Street today. All oh, right, well, okay. Uh, and secondly, um, th this particular pothole has become like one of my children. I've watched it grow over, <laughs> you know, <laughs> over a period of ground. On the rest of the road. I'm still going the road on Saturday morning, yeah. It's just slightly bigger than it was when you were last there. Yeah, I'll tell you the same so, when I went over it. Right, OK. <laughs> you, yeah. Have you, re re you, you reported it? Uh, yes, it's clear. Yeah. You can just give us a number. White, right? They've white-lined it. They've white-lined it. And then the guy, to test how bad it was, drove his van over it. 
Uh, she happen? Give you. me the report number. And thank I'll take you for that, Councillor Jackson. Right, Keith, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you very much for your attendance. attendance. We now have... I'm sorry about leaving early as well. Sorry, I've got We now have the Deputy Mayor. All right, thank you. I, uh, you uh, we'll try to be you. very brief. I've only got a brief list. Yeah. Um, I've been on a holiday and I left a series of tasks to be done and it looks like they're cracking on with them, so perhaps it's better if I'm not interfering. Uh, I'm pleased to say that the loading bay has been done at the uh, top end of the high street. What it has done is increased the number of parking spaces as mm -hmm. well because it's, it's stopped that. So um, myself and Councillor Hawk have been down there as well and just checked that the posts are positioned in the right place and where they should be. And for once, it would appear, touch wood, that they don't have to come back and redo it on that particular one. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'm very pleased with the progress on Meadows Way. I know the short-term pain to get that done, but certainly now that we raised a number of issues with the initial repairs, which were done with the and operating mechanical rollers. And we, I asked that they uh, got the machinery in. I was told that it's got a, there's a capacity issue and we've got to wait. And my fear was, is nothing was going to happen for 12 months. But within six weeks, they're actually on, on the case and the repairs are much better. And it looks like while the machine's doing there, something which was unexpected is they've started work on the roundabouts or certainly a significant part of the roundabouts because that wasn't due to commence until next spring. So I'm pleased to say that they slightly ahead of where they should be. They have started work on the Cat 3s. They've done some work on Mow Lane. They've got work to do. I'm hoping they will carry on in short order with Grange Road and Overton Road and New Street. New Street being an absolute bugbear. And I do agree with you, uh, Councillor Jones, they should be doing now. They should be doing something which is called whole place repairs which effectively means if they come to do that and there's something within a stride, then they should be filling those in as well. There's no evidence that that's happening. Is that, that is something I, am, I have picked up on numerous times. You will have noticed we've had an extra disabled bay installed there. I did that with the DHB. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, I don't think they spelt it wrong. They missed out the apostrophe, that's all I can say. But because they were short of apostrophes, they've come back and spelt it right without the apostrophe today. So hopefully that's right. But that increases the capacity for disabled parking in the middle and behind the town hall and hopefully helps to service the, the streets which are close by who have, have difficulty with no off-street parking. There are still ongoing issues which I'm hoping to help to resolve, but getting additional bays, especially in areas which have currently got double yellow lines, are a lot more expensive with the with the legal thing. So we'll see what, what we can do. As Councillor Flunders mentioned, the uh, Climate Change Community Fund is now open. We've got £1,500 each. I am minded of something which we spoke to on earlier on to use that to see if we can get uh, the hydroelectric system reviewed down at the Grange Vista Centre because I think that's the right thing to do on so many different levels. I don't think we should have something which is quite innovative, not working. And I think in the current energy crisis and our climate change requirements, anything which produces renewables and helps to offset the electricity we're using is, is obviously a good thing. I'll try, I'll have to raise with Sarah, but we'll try to get somebody from Keele University, I think, offered some services from memory a few years back to have a look at it, see what's required. But I, I shouldn't think, I, I'm feeling it shouldn't be a significant job, so we'll see what's what. I mean, modern inverters are plug in. It's just how the valves and things are working. But I'd like to focus on that because I think that, that takes an awful lot of box. Uh, on the climate change side, um, I'm with the county act on very much so. I'm a member of the Staffordshire Sustainability Board and I was elected vice chair, so we've got a political balance on that, which is always good because we look at the same things from different angles and usually come up with a, with a good position together. One of the issues which we're trying to address at the moment is household waste and recycling centre charges for DIY uh, waste. There has been a directive from the uh, government minister to say that those charges should be stopped forthwith. At the moment, there is a little bit of pushback from county, so I am working very hard and very vociferously to see if we can get those charges stopped. I think there's far more intelligent things we can do with, with charging and permits and things like that to actually help our residents and actually get funding in from, from other sources. So I am looking at that very closely. And the electric vehicle charging points, I'm conscious that we've got the 
conduits and infrastructure down in the car park with no electric vehicle charging points. There was a push for staff to all the district council to go in their own direction. However, the county are now part of a Midlands consortium, which includes Derbyshire City Council, Derbyshire County Council, Nottingham, Nottingham City Council, Nottinghamshire and Staffordshire. And they successfully bid for fifteen and a half million pounds. So what we're looking to do now is to get the public charging points to be common across that whole area. So we've got the economy of scale of actually inputting the charging points themselves and the maintenance contracts with the common maintenance contract we pay in all of them. So that is the most efficient way of doing it. So we are looking at the budget which we've got for EV charging at Staffordshire Moorlands to do some innovative projects for the smaller car parks and the staff parking, which allows us to actually encourage our staff to uh, uh, have confidence in moving to that transition. And the other comment I'll make is that uh, I've got a DHP meeting on the 3rd of August, and I'm very aware that we've got the two projects, one which we did with Councillor Jones, the other one at uh, the, the Biddle Farms, and we'll be seeing what the progress is on getting that uh, information for you to see if it takes it forward. And the final point, just picking up on Brown Edge, what I'm absolutely lobbying for, and I did it as a consequence of resurfacing Briar's Wood, um, is that we get the list ahead of the season so that as a town council and whatever committee, whether it's full council or town council, we've got a chance of reviewing it and putting an opinion and seeing if we can get other roads done. In an ideal world, every single road gets done in rotation, but the reality of it is we're playing catch-up. So we really have got to have a degree of prioritisation. And that's always a difficult decision to make, but I think that's a decision which we should be involved in as a town council. Thank you. We've got Councillor Garvey and Councillor Rogers. Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to let this one go, but as Councillor uh, Gates raised the Meadows Way roundabout, I was delighted to see the approach to the roundabout fully resurfaced. But looking at the roundabout itself, which is needing a significant amount of work, they're patching it in stripes. Now, those of you who are familiar with the state of the roads will know that the majority of decay in the roads are at joining points between different tarmac surfaces. So simply laying concentric circles around the roundabout is simply going to allow for a greater degree of edge and therefore a greater degree of potential degradation of the surface to break down. Can we not have some long-term joined up thinking in terms of resurfacing the whole area when it looks like at least 50% of it is going to be resurfaced anyway? I know this isn't specific to, to uh, Staffordshire County Council because I see exactly the same thing in Cheshire, but it does just require a bit of joined up thinking. The second thing around pothole refilling is the recent uh, proposal for the Park Lane closure for resurfacing work, putting a, di a diversion down Crowborough Road. Can someone please review the diversions by looking at the roads themselves rather than simply looking at a map, being aware of it, getting some local knowledge? But the thought of putting a significant amount of traffic down Crowborough Road all the way back up to the edge road and then back around and down again the other side of Biddle of um, Bill Grange Country Park seems somewhat ludicrous. And I did have a final thing, but it's gone now. So issues. If you, if you can actually at least get some joined up thinking, both in terms of surfacing and in terms of diversion, please. Yes, uh, Councillor Garvey, I think you're absolutely right on both points. I usually I review the uh, diversions, because I do get a heads up as a county councillor. Unfortunately, that particular one isn't on my division, so I didn't get a heads up because it was associated with a little south and end and uh, thing. But uh, it's just it's just one of those things. Sometimes you pick them up, sometimes you don't. But I had a similar issue with uh, hot lane being used and the Orchard Road was having a repair instead of Leap Lane. Neither, neither are perfect, but Leap Lane certainly a lot straighter with less hedges than, than the Hot Lane. With regards to the, to the, to the striping, I absolutely agree. However, the, this part of this overall works which is being done, there is going to be a whole surface treatment which involves a sealant put down first. I do know that. And they are doing the curbings around as well. Uh, I'm not going to particularly, clean. and because that's that will be done next year, and I think what they'll do is anything which has happened between now and again, they'll obviously address. I'm, I'm pleased that certainly in the short term, they've taken out some of those serious potholes. But yeah, I would love a wider machine which which does the whole thing, but I'm sure <laughs> surely we'll get there. Councillor Rogers. 
Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, one how they used to talk is years ago now. Um, I brought up with Councillor Flunder, even though it wasn't on this plot at the time, and it's still on this plot. Junction of Paul's Road and Station Road, no signage at all. Uh, we've asked, and the residents around there assure me there's quite often a very, very close accident, and there's going to be a serious accident one day. And I think it was looked at, and it was going to cost a fortune. It's how much is her life? Well, yeah, I, I will say I did raise it, and we have looked at it. And what they've what they've agreed to do is to put the white lining down. And with the approach, and if the white line is, is renewed, originally they reviewed it on Google Maps and said the white lines are absolutely fine. There's no work which is required doing. I did insist is probably a strong word, but I did encourage them to go and have a physical look. And within a day of having a physical look, I got a full report saying that all the white lines, including centre lines, are going to be reinstated. Now, that work should have been done by now. However, I did go back to him and say, can you please make sure you fill in the potholes which are in the centre? And he said, there's no potholes. I said, can you please go look, have a look again? So they have a look again, and they do acknowledge there's potholes to be filled in before they put the white lines. So it's a little bit of a circus sometimes. But I'm... Thinking, I, I've, I've walked this, I've walked this with other people, and we've looked at it in the way it curves. If those white lines are put far enough back, which I've asked for, and I've asked them to be very dominant, I think, I think it should be fine. There isn't really a very sensible position for putting a giveaway sign. It's actually tucked slightly around the corner, and it does need power, and that is a fundamental issue. And the cost of, and it's a legal requirement that it needs a light. And the cost of that is very, very, very expensive. There are, and we do come back to evidence. There isn't any evidence of issues on that on that junction. Now, I know we all live close to there. It's all anecdotal. What I could say is somebody who lives close there and somebody who does a lot of walking and, as John said, a lot of cycling. I've lived there 30 years. I've gone past that junction four times a day in 30 years, 365 times by 30 by four. It's a very large number. I've never seen anything close to an incident. But that appealed to me. I know other people potentially have. So let's get the first stage done and let's chip away at it. But the funding I have to do things like that, which are classed as non-priority, I'd have to save up three years funding to do one one one, one giveaway sign. And it just isn't, isn't economically feasible to do. Uh, and I do sympathise because, you know, it, it, it is close to me, so I see it. So I, I speak to the neighbours and the neighbours shout them, speak to me. And but I think if we get the lighting, the, the lining right, let's see where we are. And let's see. Where, I've even thought of can you put something on the opposite wall? You know what I mean? But then you're stopping beyond, and that's not a legal, a legal thing. Councillor, very briefly. Uh, uh, Councillor Yates, could they use a solar light? So they don't have to run power to it. They sort of it's a bit confused that way when I said solar lights because I've suggested solar lights on other, other things, and he says something which I'm looking at with sustainable. If you go into Doggy Map, there's a set of solar lights there for 25 quid. <laughs> I think they fit quite well. <laughs> you, you know, you've been a council long enough, Councillor Hart. You know that councils work in a mysterious way. So that's oh, yes, a different comment, which oh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> right, councillors, we'll move on from that. Thank you very much, Nigel, for that uh, report. Yeah. Brief report it was, no. Right, if we can go on to... Um... <laughs> oh yes, item 12, apologies. Have we had any apologies? Uh, we do. Recording. Brady, Crowdlove, Rushton, Salt and Smith. Right, thank you very much. Anyone else? Do we know? I think it's really a cool reason. Yeah, it's entirely a cool reason. Yeah. Blended. Uh, we then move on to item 13, Declaration of Interest. A, to declare any dis disclosable. disclosable or pecuniary interest and, sorry? Dispensations. That's yeah. it. Have we got any? No? No, we have one. Next one's uh, to declare any other disclosable interest. Councillor Jones. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just on the accounts of finance, uh, pretty much anything with a bit of more than it's on the grants, uh, yeah, I've got some sort of interest in. Thank you. Councillor Garvey. Yes, yeah, so on the finance, um, the 
uh, one of the applicants is related to me. Thank you, Councillor Garvey. Anyone else? Councillor Rogers. I'm actually to I should have some travel expenses from my office. Thank you. Very much. All right, so now can move on to number 14 for the minutes. To approve and sign the minutes of the Town Council meeting held on Tuesday, the 13th of June 2023. Right, the uh, attendance list is uh, everybody in agreement, no errors? Uh, public participation, aperture police, just shout out if there's anything which one's correcting as I go down. Public participation, staff police. Staffordshire County, County Council representatives, any apologies for your admission? Item three, declaration of interest. Uh, goes on, comes to item, we jump to item nine at that stage, which is uh, to approve the co option of a councillor for the South. Uh, back down to normal minutes, item four minutes. Uh, a, the minutes of the uh, annual meeting. B, the notes of the annual meeting held on the 23rd of May 2023. C, the minutes of the planning committee. D, the minutes of the financial strategy and management committee. Item five, mayor's communications. Item six, standing agenda items. Obviously, 11 to... Item seven, 2022-2023 annual report, the draft document which was presented. Item 10, accounts and finance. Okay. And that concludes the review of those minutes. Right, the, the next one, gents, is um, to receive the minutes of the Recreation and Amenities Committee held on the 13th of June 2023. Thank you. Those minutes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That's the goal, people second. Councillor Garvey, second. Thank you. Sorry. Who proposed and second the town council? Oh. Could, we Could we have a proposal for the town council meeting? Thank you. Councillor Hart, Councillor Jackson, are you, are you proposed seconding that? No? Yes, much of a disagree with a lot that went on there, I will second it. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to. Thank you, Councillor Hart. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, many of the recreation and amenities committee uh, present, also in attendance. One, election of chair and deputy chair. Two, apologies received. Three, declarations of interest. Four, the previous minutes. Five, item requested by Councillor Holdsworth. Six, to receive a brief update in relation to ongoing projects. Seven, to consider priorities for this committee for 2023-24. Eight, to agree site visits for committee members. Nine, jobs for Lentzman and in confidential items to consider land opportunities within the town. We need to vote for the next one. Yeah. Has everyone received that? Has everybody received that? That answer, yeah. Yes, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, item C, to receive the minutes of the planning committee held on the 20th of June, 2023. Move those minutes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Garvey seconded their minutes. Thank you very much. Over to you. Again, going through them, the uh, who was present, followed by extra attendance. Number 12, apologies. Number 13, declarations of interest. Number 14, minutes. Number 15, standard agenda items. Standing agenda items to consider any proposed sites for local listing. Number 16, to receive a verbal <laughs> update on the progress with the neighbourhood plan and neighbourhood development order. Number 17, to receive an update on Town Council planning applications. Number 18, new planning applications. Number 19, to consider supplementary applications received since the agenda was created. And number 20, a review of the new decisions and notices received from the District Council. Thank you for that, Nigel. Show of hands, please. Thank you very much. Um, the next one is to receive the minutes of the Town and Community Committee held on the 20th of June, 23. Thank you. Councillor Garvey. 
Councillor Jackson second. Councillor Jackson second. Yeah, I mean, just to uh, note that my name was missing off either present or they uh, didn't sign the sheet. I may not, I will definitely hear. Uh, whether I signed the sheet or not, I don't know. But yeah. I mean, they've been missed off both ways. If you didn't, it was like a lot of us, actually. <laughs> you are seconding that, aren't you? Um, Thank you very much. I'm a member of that committee, so yeah. I'll second that yeah. in the absence of anybody. Yeah. 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 Oh, it absolutely is, and yeah. Okay. So again, present, we've had that clarified, also in attendance. One, election of chair and deputy chair. Two, apology. Three, declarations of interest. Four, minutes. Five, item requested by Councillor Smith to consider the provision of res resource library. Six, item requested by Councillor Salt to receive an update on a project to analyse the Biddle Ways Together project and to agree a town council position. Item seven, to receive an update from the chief officer on summer events and activities. And that concludes the uh, sections, if everybody's happy. Yeah, can we show of hands, please, if we accept these? Thank you very much. Uh, the next one is to approve and sign the minutes of the Finance, Strategy and Management Committee held on the 27th of June, 2020. Three. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. please. Thank you. Can we have a second to that one, please? Oh, thank you, Councillor Lee. Okay. Yeah. I'm going through the uh, attendance, the officers in attendance. Item fifteen, apologies. Item sixteen, de declarations of interest. Item seventeen, minutes. Item 18, strategic direction. Item 19, shared prosperity, to receive an update in relation to the shared prosperity funding. Item 20, the two pounds bus fares on the 93 service. Item 21, support staff jerk volunteering for all. Item 22, send provision. Item 23, standing agenda items. And moving on to confidential items. Item 24, quotations. Item 25, grants. And that's concluded the uh, minutes. Thank you very much. Can uh, we have a vote? We accept the minutes, please. All right, thank you. Uh, I abstain. You abstain. Yes. Okay. Record that. Oh. Thank you very much. All right. Ooh. Oh. This is me. Me too bad. Right, now it's comes. Um, Sorry, uh, how, how are we supposed to declare that we are standing? If, if it's to be recorded in the minutes, then yes. Thank you for that. Can I ask if any of you are abstaining or anything like that? You stick your hand up to be plainly visible to whoever it is yeah. on the top table. Oh. Um, Mayor's comms, right. He's a Methodist church twice. Um, the what the first time was was a music evening, and I'll be quite honest with you. Uh, I always view these sort of evenings with a bit of trepidation, but I went in and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, the musicians are absolutely brilliant. Um, they they weren't. Um, well, we're not, not careful what you say with a bunch of, but you know they were adults. Um, they were playing. You could tell they were committed, and uh, they were absolutely fantastic. You know, you could you, that little orchestra could go anywhere, as far as I'm concerned, and then tackle at any other councillors. Um, also, we had the festival. It was the launch of the festival. Uh, I met many, well, a few stallholders and uh, some pe people dressed up a bit differently, um, and again. We were lucky, the weather held off for us. Um, and, and there was a tidy crowd there. I, I would hope perhaps a bit more. But 
we had a good we had a crowd. Um, after that, so I carried me on writing. Oh yeah, there was a mayor making ceremony at um, Congleton that I went to. Um, the thing about these mayor making that you know I I view them sometimes is it worth it? I've come to the conclusion yes it is because you start networking with other mayors and other towns. So, you know, you, you've now got communication lines. Um, I'll give you an example at, at Leek, uh, when we had the f flag raising there. Um, I met the, the Leek uh, mayor and also the Cheadle mayor, and we've agreed, the three of us, that we should come together and try and work together uh, for the benefit of Staffordshire Moorlands. And we're hoping to have a meeting later on this month. Um, and I think by joining together, we've got a bit more muscle to do things. Uh, and we won't be competing for the same thing. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, I always get get it mixed up. or oh, mispronounce it. Fustiano, the... Uh, oh, no. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, we had... Um, they presented us with a gift, which uh, will be the, the DVDs. Um, and it's obviously music, and I'm, I'm very interested in this one because it looks like church music, which is something I really do like. Um, so, so I'm accepting the I accepted these on behalf of the town council, and uh, yeah, I might borrow one of these and never listen. Um, right, so that's my business concluded. Um, so we can move on then to uh, standing agenda items. To a to receive an update on the management of the town council assets, Sarah. Thank you. Just a, a couple of bits from me on this. Um, since we met last month, I have received a report, as the new PCSO uh, mentioned, um, from the Crown Reduction Team at Staffordshire Police. And um, this building and our kind of periphery uh, was highlighted as being an area where we might appreciate some support with regards to antisocial behaviour, particularly down the very dark garden area to the side there. So that will come to you at the Town and Community Committee for the discussion with recommendations about some aspects we need to find. So that's quite an interesting read, actually, and very thorough. Um, we have had the energy performance certificate renewed at the visitor centre. So for those of you who know about these things, there is a requirement for us to do that, for that to be registered on the government website. So that's, um, that's happened. Um, and we are continuing with our mapping of processes uh, to enable us to ensure that there's consistent kind of monitor monitoring and um, management of all our uh, obligations as regards our buildings. So how many processes we've mapped so far? 112 processes we've mapped so far to ensure we've got consistency across uh, our management post, uh, our management. So um, right. that's kind of my update on that. Right. That's all right. Thank you very much, Sarah. Have anybody got Councilor any Jackson. questions? Councillor Jackson. Yeah, just on, on, the, on the question that the, the PCSO brought up about the Staffordshire wide design out crime chap who did an audit and bill. I didn't sort of bring it up with him, but probably, you know, way way above his pay grade. But when that goes through, like the pro police process, it just, it's got to go back to somewhere else. The guy's only just in the piece of work, I understand it. I think it would be useful if we get signed to that document to see exactly what the police are saying um, about the infrastructure and bill that is not conducive to good policing. It would be a real interesting fact to go through that with future work for the town council. That's good. Sorry if I may miss yeah. I've got, I've got, That's what I've got. Oh, right. Oh, he's, so got... he's written the recommendations in a letter to me. So that's what we've got already. So we've got recommendations for here, for the yeah. Millennium Gardens and for Station Road. Could you go to one of the committees then? And community next week. Right. Uh, any other questions for on that? Right, the next one is to receive an update on health and safety activities. Uh, thank you. We are very much looking forward to welcoming the District Council uh, Health and Safety Advisor, who we commission um, 
as part of a service level agreement, he's coming tomorrow. Uh, so we spent all afternoon tidying up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so he's coming tomorrow for his six-monthly health and safety review of our uh, building here. And so he walks around, he reviews all of our um, tickets and, uh, you know, the documents that we've had after we've had things serviced and that kind of thing. Um, so there'll be a recommendation report after that. Uh, the mayor has got... Uh, has done a walk around as well with his health and safety councillor hat on. Um, so if you recall from previous conversations, he's going to do um, that project quarterly and he's got different activities to complete each time he does that. So we hope that we would get to the visitor centre today to complete a walk around the visitor centre, but that's been postponed until just next week. Yeah. And then we'll be able to bring... Um, his feedback to you from that it's 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 been refreshing actually for all of us hasn't it because yes. obviously when you see a building and you walk around it all the time you perhaps don't ask the same questions that somebody who's not as familiar with the building does so yeah. you know, that's been a useful process for us so we'll bring that back to you at the next meeting um and we after your approval for us to complete the royal society of prevention of accidents documentation um for an award there, we hope we have, I can confirm we have completed that, which was quite a challenging process actually. So uh, we've, we've met the, the required time scales and hopefully we'll be able to feedback on that in, well, due course is what they're telling me. So we'll see. Mm. All right, thank you very much. Any, any questions for Sarah on that? Thank you very much. Uh, I just see to receive an update on the Biddle for Works Together project. Uh, just a couple of things to say about this. We're hoping to have a meeting of the original kind of steering group and anyone else who wants to join probably the second week of September now so that we can start getting into at that point um, what we need to do for the colder winter months. Um, we're doing a piece of work as a team to try and draw together some of the information which started to come out on Facebook and social media and in the newspapers um, about activities that are free to attend or whether it's free food um, or support of other sorts, um, particularly during the holiday time for families to access, you know, free school meals as they might normally. So we've uh, contacted our partners of the Bill to Fix Together um, steering group just to see if we want to feed anything into that. So that will include things like, the, um, obviously, like the food bank and um, other organisations as well. I know there's a lot going on at the youth zone. So we'll just make sure we've got all that information right, the days that things are being offered, and then that will go out as one document to the schools before the end of the school year, which is the next round. I've got a question there, Sarah, for me. Um, with regards to the pressure that, that these people are on, work who have no fault of their own, haven't got sufficient food, eating support, etc., etc. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm thinking of Councillor Park, sorry, from, from, from the, the, the side of, of mental, not mental problems, the wrong words, but, you know, that, that sort of thing. Would that feed into little folks together? It has done previously. We've identified that people with um, quite low level, mm -hmm. at that point, mental health problems, um, they have certainly have ac a difficulty accessing services yeah. Um, and need additional support with that. And we'd looked at that last year, so that's one for us to pick up again. So we're signposting for, for these people? Absolutely signposting. There isn't a lot to signpost them to at the moment yeah. for the very low-level support, which is what a lot of people need. Yeah. I don't know, Adam, are you, you sort of... Uh, you fresh to the council. Are, are you involved in this, or do you know much yeah. about what's... Not not as yet. I mean, obviously, it links very, very closely to a lot of the discussions that we had earlier, earlier this week. I mean, obviously, from a mental health perspective, um, debt um, yeah. and the things that surround debt with regard to mental health issues, domestic violence, antisocial behaviour, alcoholism, drugs, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's, you know, it's a domino. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, there's a massive domino effect. Yeah. All right. So, are, are you as Adam on this committee? Have you you've been invited to it, Adam? If I may, we haven't met since he's become a councillor. Me, but all for it together. No, we... oh, in that case, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, th thank you very much for that. Um, next item is well, oh, uh, number seventeen. 
to receive an update on outside body meetings attended in the past month. Right, Sarah. Uh, thank you. So this, uh, we decided, would uh, be the annual meeting of the Town Council, would be something that we would add to the Town Council agenda to ensure that those people who are our representatives on the Biddulph and Bloom Committee, Moorlands Assembly, Staffordshire Parish Council Association, Moorlands Partnership Board, Training Association and the Fair Trade Group. So we have representatives from the council on all those groups. This is their opportunity to feed back. Council House, you are sorry. If, if any of those groups have met, and we're only talking about meetings that have happened. Okay, council House, you have your hand up, then Council Rogers. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor Moore's partnership is next week. That will be the first one that I can attend, and you're willing to cut your lift with me if you wish. Thank you very much. <laughs> Same expenses. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, it's nice to get back onto Moore's partnership, as the previous council administration chucked me off it. Uh, I'm very glad to be back on. Thank you, Councillor Hart. Councillor Rogers. Yeah, Mr Mayor, just, just briefly, don't we mention Bill of Blue and Fire? I don't know if you're the representative, are you? Uh, not sure. I won't mention that. Council okay. Guardian. Uh, what was the yeah. Yeah. If I wasn't, I, I, I was unavailable for their last meeting, so. Oh. Yeah. I'm a representative on bid up. Yeah. I'll mention, I'll mention the other one. Okay. Because I was at the bid but I'm not elected representative. I won't speak on that. So, Mullins Parish Assembly. Um, I myself are going to that from now on. Um, it was a small agenda, but went on quite a little while, really, which was interesting. Inspector Mark Barlow was given a presentation, very much like he gave us in the hall downstairs a few weeks ago. Added on very much to what the PCSO told us earlier tonight. And the interesting part is he, he stated again that they're going to more, more call takers. They're pushing for more call takers to answer that phone. So you don't have to wait as long when you want to ring the police. I just hope that comes off. Uh, but you say it will, so watch this space on that one. The other presentation we had was Council Nigel Yates. A very interesting climate and environment change talk, which I won't go into because we'll be on for a little while, but it's very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> 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 well, until I've got questions. Silent, <laughs> silent, <laughs> sassy. <laughs> That's the other one. Are you sure? That's the best PCA at Stafford. I haven't been to that since the May, but I'll update it in the future when I go. Thank you very much, Councillor Rogers. Any other council got any comments or it's declare? No. Right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item 18. Do you consider hosting a group of staff Jim Orleans clerks at the town hall at share good practice? Well, we've done this for years, haven't we? No, we've never done it. You're joking. No. No. Well, we have. No, we have. Oh, we have. Oh, no, we have. Oh, no, oh, yes, we have. Well, maybe. <laughs> Go on, then. Uh, so there's, there's quite a lot of talk at the moment about Savage Morland's working more closely together yeah. and people um, sharing good practice, which absolutely, I'm absolutely happy to do. Um, talk about, uh, and you mentioned it yourself, about the clerks and mayors of the three towns meeting up to share good practice. Um, again, happy to do that. I, I wonder whether there's some benefit in inviting all of the clerks across the moorlands. And uh, it seemed like a nice thing to do to have it here. It might be that we say that we want to do a rotating meeting. I imagine it being a couple of emails exchanged in order to do, to arrange it, and then a couple of hours for a meeting um, I, I think there would be some benefit to that. I don't know how others will feel about it. So it might be that numbers are low or the conversations that happen aren't productive, but I did think it would be a positive thing to do. Like seek your approval, please, if you're also happy with that. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, first of all, John Jones, yeah, sorry, Councillor Jones. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's a good idea. If I'm second day, let's take a vote. I'll second that. Councillor Jackson? Yeah, I fully agree. Uh, I'm just wondering, is there a collective noun for clerks? There should be, shouldn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Murder, perhaps, or something along those lines. Yeah. It's been like organisation. Fascination, yes. Yeah. Gaggle, because you know what they like. <laughs> um, Parliament? 
<laughs> Kills the heart. So. Yeah, it's. Um, I think uh, Councillor Jack sucked it up about how a, a clerk should be, a chief officer should be, always several moves ahead of the members, well and truly, <laughs> and getting it all right long in advance. And one day, Councillor Jackson, maybe you might catch the chief officer out, but I doubt it. It's not the name, then. It's truth say, isn't it? Mm. Well, it is. <laughs> when it comes to us, we are, I think, we are the best town council in the whole of South mm. probably, in well, the North of Midlands. <laughs> uh, we've got all sorts of other We've always done it. <laughs> we need to disseminate that information to the less well-informed. So I'm going to second it. Thank you, Councillor Hart. All in favour of that? Yeah. Thank Redford. you very much. Oh, sorry, Councillor Redfern, my apologies. I was a, Mr Mayor, mine was only going to be a very short point of information. I don't think we've ever hosted a meeting of the clerks of the Staffordshire Moorlands. We certainly have in the past played host for the Staffordshire Parish Councils Association on a number of occasions. Oh, well, if, if I can just clarify my comments, I'll come back to you, Per. I can remember your predecessor, and there, were, there was the tables, and not only were there all the plaques there, they also had a little bag with little goodies in it from Biddle. You know, the, the diggings and all that sort of stuff. So, sorry, I know I, I, know I like whiskey, but I wasn't drinking any that day. <laughs> it was a I thought it was a way of getting rid of some of those books. I know. <laughs> Have you got any more? <laughs> uh, anybody want a book? <laughs> There's some books on the bypass you can give them as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Councillor Jones. Oh, I've gone done, Mr. Mayor. Give him the frivolity. Let's move on. Yeah, move on. Councillor Hawley. Praise God. Yeah. The, the only thing I was going to sort of say, you've got down to share good practice. I mean, I think really what you really mean is that basically you're going to tell us how to do it. I mean, I think that's <laughs> potentially the way it's going to be because effectively we've got the gold awards, we've got all those sort of various awards. But I don't think Leek Cheel or anyone else is anywhere near us. So it's probably going to be a case of you leading this and sort of saying this is how we do things. You know, yeah. It surprised me if they come up with anything better than what we... I, I was at a district meeting and uh, you, a prominent member of the Labour group actually admitted, your leader, how well we do things at Biddle. He actually praised us uh, as being, you know, uh, having a good practice. And he says, you're always ahead of things. So I take that compliment the way it was meant. Very good. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, all in favour of that, please. Thank you very much. What's next? A, B, and C. Oh dear, Accounts and Finance. Right, that's yours, Nigel. Oh, I'll, I'll go to that. Right. Sure, yeah. To approve the accounts to be paid in July 23, expenditure between £500 and £5,000. Is there any comments there? Expenditure less than £500. If you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, I've got a question oh. draft on that. Carry on. Just looking on the uh, second page, the octopus energy, uh, a couple of things. For this to send to June electricity, £520. I can't imagine that they used any heating in June. So that really is what I consider as the baseline for a month. So that was that, would that be a fair assumption? Uh, and the other, the other thing is obviously underneath, is we, had, we have had a £540 rebate. Does that infer that the meterage... Uh, is problematic, so the figure above could well be wrong as well. Or... They're plotting, by the way, councillors. They're plotting. Okay. It's, we, we think it's because they, we've submitted an actual oh, okay. invoiced estimate. So right, it's, okay. So it's, okay. Are you confident that June is an actual start to finish? Is that representative of what the months is that? Because to me, I would have reckoned June, July, and August are potentially baseline figures of what no, no you know with no heat, because that allows us to start working out a payback calculation if we work to sort of invest in anything renewable, so to speak. So it does become it does become a very important figure. Yeah. 
Um, still on the, on the same page that Nigel's on. Uh, if you go half a third of the way down, um, energy services and a display certificate, £211.20. Tell me more about that. Oh. It's uh, somewhere over there. Page yes. two. That we said yeah. we are legally obliged to have what we call a display energy certificate. So when you come into the town hall on your left there, yeah. it's the one that's so, uh, colourful stripes. We've gone up in the world. We're better than we were. Oh, we? right. Uh, we're seeing now, I think. So that's £211. So, who... so we have to have an organisation who's qualified to do that, to come into the building to assess lights, heating, all that sort of thing, to then determine where we are in terms of our energy usage. So since the last one we had, you have to have it done annually. And the last one we had done, obviously last year, since then we've got quite a bit more LED lighting and we've moved the um, thermostats around for the boilers so that we're now in a position that we weren't in last year where we can have different temperatures in different areas of the building, which has got to be an issue going forward. Oh, yeah. Th thank you for that. I know we can't see it now, but I did raise a flagged up about these um, things on the wall like you know, uh, altering the temperature the thermostats. the thermostats, that's the one I thought they were quite expensive uh, but I can't see it now uh, I don't think we did it this time well, this, um, uh, right. but yes, I did go through the finance committee yeah Okay. did I hear anybody? no so, uh, to approve the supplementary accounts which have just been tabled, which are these ones here. So, uh, yeah, it was two minutes. For Rogers, yeah, just, just very, very briefly on this supplementary one next to the bottom there. Paul Silver Band, how are we having this year? The number for Sunday, brilliant, thank you. <laughs> you can say that, but not say that, you know what I mean? <laughs> really, <laughs> lots of jobs. I've missed it. Uh, I'm delighted. I'm Councillor Jones, did you have something to come back? I was just, that exactly the same? I was just gonna say, I was encouraged to see the item between. ADT and Eon, and yeah. if it's going to happen, thank you very much. That's all I was going to say. In case it was a, in case it was a secret. It's all in writing, it. Yes, there is. There's an there's an additional booking for an event towards the end of the year, which has previously been quite silent and now won't be. If that's helpful to anyone, <laughs> be great. It's encouraging. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm just querying Sarah for me. The the um. Scallons Jewelers, one bar, 124 quid. Yeah, yeah, that's that we haven't done in fives. Oh, fives, yeah. right. Fair enough then. Yeah. yeah that's not... Can I pr propose that we accept these? Yeah. yeah. Must be yeah. somebody. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Redford. Can I have a second? Here? I'll second. Is that A and B? That's not B, yeah. yeah. Um, I can yeah. see to approve grant allocations for 2023-24. Checking a vote on AFP. Yes, we better have. Yes. All in favour, please. Yeah. Right. Any against? Any abstentions? You're scratching your head there, Wayne. I have. I have. Yeah, yeah. Right, sorry, Nigel. Uh, item C to approve grant allocations for 23-24, subject in some cases to additional verification. And they are itemised in item D of the name of the group and the grant allocation. Jackson. Yeah. 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 Um, with the lifeline money actually not cleared yet at, at the district council, it was said at the meeting that if that happens, that that two thousand pounds goes to another applicant. Right. Now, is that covered in, in C? That's my point, but it doesn't actually say it's in the minutes that that is the case. Um, I, it would be my preference, I think, to put that on a, another finance agenda, your consideration. I 
I don't think we minted it quite like that, that it would definitely go to another applicant. I thought we did. Okay. Um, I think we'll... Talking to Councillor Jones about that, you might obviously have more information than me. We, I think we're going to hold off on the lifeline graph until we have information from the district and then come back to you and tell you what's happening with that. Basically. So it's my recollection at, the, at that meeting that if the £2,000, and I realise we're in, in the public domain here, so I need to be careful, I suppose, um, that if, and that, that's my recollection, because Mine as well. It, it was the last, virtually the last two, three um, applications that we got in front of us. And I believe, that my, my recollection is, that if the £2,000 wasn't coming from the district council, then the, the town council would pay the 2000 If the reverse was the case, then that would go to the other applicant. That is my recollection of that meeting. And I will, what I will say is I, I agree with Councillor Jackson. That's my recollection. Councillor Jones, he's got it. Councillor Jones. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with what Councillor Jackson's just said, but um, we don't know what's happening. And I think Sarah's uh, suggestion is probably the best thing. It's the review to get for the next finance. You've got to remember as well that all we could do is taking over maintenance of the existing ones. We want to put some more in. And we had we had got a project in mind for another one at Brown Lees because there isn't one at Brown Lees. Um, so there might be that, that might complicate the issue. Money's got to come somewhere. Um, so I think probably the idea that we send up tonight. I think if Sarah suggests is probably the best. Well, let's discuss it the next finance and take it forward from there. Either way, the money's not going one way at other until we decide definitely what's happening. Thank you, Mr. Matt. That's so hard. Yeah. I also suggest that it goes back to finance. Uh, this is too um, inconsistent. Uh, and I think it should go back to finance uh, because we have to move forward with a lifeline and, uh, and I think that's the best way of doing it. Leaving it ambiguous and up in the air is no use at all. Waiting for somebody else to make a decision. Uh, let's send it back to finance. I think I think if just hang on, Kev. I think I'd better declare an interest in this one then because of obviously my connections with Bill's lifeline. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thank you. Right, Councillor Jackson. Yeah, I mean my understanding, and I'm not part of the administration up there, but I, my understanding is that, that that decision won't be long. Yeah. It's not going to be months. It, it's weeks rather than months. So um and I like to say at that meeting, I understood we were we were under the impression that the, 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 the decision from the district council on this was quite imminent. It obviously hasn't come in in the in the week between in, in between. I take that on board. Um, but like I say, my recollection was that when the decision from when the decision from the district council and, and district council seemed quite confident that that decision was going to be made. Um, and Councillor Jones has brought something else into the equation now about another scheme, which wasn't discussed. It wasn't. I agree. The night. It wasn't. So, you know, that, 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 that committee made that decision, and we're rat ratifying tonight the decision of that committee. And it's my recollection that that was the decision of the committee, that that £2,000 goes to one of the other organisations that put a claim in, because their, their particular ask <coughs> had been put... Right. Quite so severely, which is uh, that's a decision. I'm not I'm not arguing about that. But the two thousand pounds, I believe, we made the decision that it slots over. If if Lifeline get it from the district, that two thousand pounds from the district goes to that other organisation. And I like I like like that's move that that's what that that is the position of this council. No. Rogers. Oh, Councillor Rogers, sorry. Can yeah. I just pass this to the Chief Officer for you, just to have a quick glance? Sir, that's right, we're standing there. Here yeah, I know, I'm in it. It's just nice. It's just right in front of you. No, 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 I've got it in front. No, it's fine. Um, I, if I may, Mr Mayor, yeah, I, absolutely. I, the only reason to suggest it goes back to finance is just so that we can have a, a conversation in a, in a more confidential environment about the future of yeah. line and, and potential funding. 
absolutely if they, if that's the decision of the committee that that goes to the field of group that's absolutely fine i think the, the challenge i think that i received with that was not really having some ongoing maintenance and the investment and all the rest of it so that's not been that's not been made privy here has it but i, I, I absolutely agree that's fine we can do that i just Thanks. don't have any knowledge of it Councillor I propose it goes back to finance. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Councillor Jackson. Go on, mate. Excited to unblock a jam here because this is like, I don't think we've done this before. What we've done before, if there's been a surplus, we've waited six months. That's what we've done in the past. But this is a bit of a precedent for me. This is something that we've never done before. Can I just make a proposal that if the decision from the district council does not come through before the next finance committee, but it goes to the next finance committee, if not, we do as I, as, as what I believe was the was the wishes of the uh, grant giving committee. Right, so that's the original proposal stance, Mr. Mayor. Second, isn't it? I've got, well, I've got a council proposal I've with Kevin. I've got an amendment to that. Though. Amendment, then. Have we got a, a second to the amendment? I can second it for the amendment. Give him a nudge. Oops. Excuse yeah. me. Right. Right. Second for the amendment. Sorry, Carol. I'm just on the defibrillator, the committee here. Nolan, just looking at what was on the lap. Was that I think they met in June. And, he, and, he, and they're pretty much is saying that there's, there's going to be funding made available across the across the district. Sorry, Kevin. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. I just I would say the point of clarification. <laughs> I did actually speak to the leader on this subject today because I knew to come up, and he said that a report is being written at this moment in time. Obviously, we're not privy to the content of that report, but that is is his understanding is that a, that report is on the lines of what. Councillor Woods just said, and then it will go for the appropriate ratification. That's just... Councillor Jones. Mr Mayor, let, why are we trying to make a decision when it, what might be, what might not be? Let's just wait, see what happens, and then decide. Let's take it to next finance, and then decide. The proposal's been made. I've seen the amendment has been made. Let's take a vote. Councillor Woods, this is the amendment. Yes, yeah, yeah. you second it, right. So second it for the amendment. It's right. Are we ready to take a vote on this? Yep. Sorry, Councillor Garvey. If I may, Mayor, can, can someone clarify exactly what we're voting on? Because the I've heard words going to and fro, so can someone actually re reiterate what the, the amended proposal is, please? Yep. The amended proposal, Kevin, you're, you're the one that's doing it. Yes, Chair. Yeah. I'd like to move that if the decision from the District Council has not been made by the time of the next Finance Committee, that that decision goes to Finance. If, however, that the Traffic to Moreland Award Lifeline £2,000, then we revert back to the position of the Finance Committee, which was that if that did happen, that that, that £2,000 would be awarded. Because basically what you have to, what you have to do is actually going through another, another funding round, aren't you, with £2,000. Exactly what Councillor Jackson has said. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Well, it is for you because, you know. Um, the next finance, sure. It's two weeks for the next finance. So I'm saying if, the, if, the, if there's nothing coming from the district within that two weeks, that we go ahead and, and take it back. I know what you're saying, Kevin. Let's vote on it. All right. So, first of all, we're going to vote on the amendment. We've got a, a proposal and a second for the amendment. All in favour of the amendment. You put their hands up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. All those in favour of the original proposal. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's it's carried. No, it's um, yeah. abs abstentions, I think. I'm one abstention. I'm one abstention. I'm committed. Right. Yeah. One abstention. And I haven't voted. So that's two abstentions. That's fine. Got a bit. Yeah. Now you're into that. Right. Now we go into confidential. Thank you. On YouTube. Anyway. 
Yeah, so as we're going into confidential, I would like to thank the people on YouTube who are watching. Before I go, Councillor Garvey's got something to say. Thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe we were actually just voting on a specific item of the grants pro pro uh, proposal there, not on on the the full approval of the whole grants list. We do not need to have a separate yeah, uh, have a vote on the on, on C. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right, okay, was... a second for the last. Put the list of proposal in a second, please. I'll oppose it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jones proposing a second, please. Come on, guys. Need a second. Councillor Rogers. What? I vote. Vote. We're not having a second of that. It's Councillor Rogers. Rogers. Sorry. Yeah, Councillor Rogers. Rogers. No, it's just bloody Sorry. Sorry. It's a screen there. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Are you wing? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Wait, right. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, we're going to propose in a second that we approve the grant allocation. All in favour, please. One, two, three. Are you counting, Sarah? About ten. I don't know if that's what you say. One, two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not many. <laughs> Eleven then. Eleven and Sarah. Oh, my dear. Should we have hands up so we can see it? Hands up nice. Put your hand is in the air. Bigger scouts. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Thank you very much. Twelve. Are those against? Nil. Makes the abstentions. The previously declared interest. One, two, four abstentions. We've actually just overturned. Right. So, okay. I'll get back to it. Uh, thanking those on YouTube who have been watching. Uh, the council 